Hi, and welcome to Queen Talk with me, Wayne Stafford. In this episode, we celebrate superwomen who have excelled in the areas of wives, mothers, and beauty queens. You'll need to stay tuned to see who in this month we will be interviewing on Queen Talk with PPMC Magazine and me, Wayne Stafford. Welcome back. This is Queen Talk with me, Wayne Stafford. We'd like to thank our location today, brought to you by the Da Vinci Hotel and Suites here in Santon. So like I mentioned to you, we're celebrating super women. And it's a great honor and privilege to have here in this episode, the CEO of Mrs. South Africa, PTY Limited, a former Mrs. South Africa herself, a director of a modeling agency, and the list goes on. And she's accompanied by the current Mrs. South Africa 2020, the gorgeous, well, start with Joni Johnson and Tenji Mduli. Welcome, ladies. So you. nice to have you here. Especially now, we're moving towards August month, celebrating women. I just thought July and August, why not just celebrate women for both months, you know? Absolutely. Thank you for having us. No, it's awesome. Uh, Joni, we come up, we come a long way already, love. Mm -hmm. But I want the people to know. How did your interest in pageants, where did it start? At what age? Well, if I have to pinpoint it, I think my, my interest in pageants started from a very young age, probably age when I was a little girl, eight, nine, ten, where I really followed the Miss South Africa competition at the time. I remember cutting out the, the little photos in the newspapers and putting them in a, in a book or in an album. So it came from a, it, it was really a passion that I, that I had from a very young age and then competed probably in my first pageant at the age of 13 and that's when I met you of course and you had definitely played a big role in in igniting that flame and um, really helping me along um, on the right path and um, yeah I have you know the rest is kind of history. Yeah so I always say it's so interesting eh? I, I used to refer to Joni as one of my children then we moved on to sister <laughs> And now I'm like at that age now I'm thinking, I don't know what to call you now, you know, anymore, but I'm very proud of you. I mean, you've done Thanks. exceptionally well. Um, Joe, you won Mrs. South Africa yes. back in 2009. Correct. You placed top 10 in Mrs. World the same year. Correct. And then two years later, you bought the Mrs. South Africa title. That is right. Why? Why Mrs. SA? You know, Wayne, I think Mrs. South Africa started for me as a professional challenge um, at that point. You know, I'd seen an opportunity that I grabbed um, with both hands, being an entrepreneur and very ambitious at the time and still am. And, um, but you know, since then it's really become my vocation and something that's very, very close to my heart and an incredible platform and opportunity that I've been given to truly affect change in women's lives. Tell me, um, Tenji, our new Mrs. South Africa. Well, I mean, new in the sense of a few months now. You've got the shortest reign for Mrs. South Africa uh, due to COVID and things. But what, what legacy do you want to leave behind as Mrs. South Africa 2020? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it is definitely the shortest reign. But I think it actually propelled me to start working on things much sooner. And I've got a few things that I want to leave behind. Well, firstly, I want to show everyone who grew up just like me that there are no limits and anything is possible. And secondly, just really get my nutrition and wellness message out there and let it keep going even long after my reign ends. But you're very passionate about wellness and, and nutrition, right? Because what, what, what change do you want to, what, how do you want to educate people on that? First, I want it to be accessible to everyone. And currently in South Africa, it feels like it's a luxury for only, you know, the wealthy. And um, also just getting the narrative out there, just people don't, it's not always about resources, it's always sometimes about knowledge. So getting the message out, but also having a lot of initiatives out there that can keep on giving back. So it's all levels. So getting people educated, getting people in agricultural schools, supporting female farmers, getting gardens at schools. So it's like at all levels. Yeah, because I see you're very busy, eh? <laughs> you are on the go. Tell me, Tenji, obviously, you know, being Mrs. South Africa, you're going to represent uh, our country at Mrs. World. Yes, I am. I'm excited about that. I'm so, so excited. Did you ever think that your life would actually reach this level? 
Not at all. You know, I think we all have dreams growing up, but you know, as reality hits and you get older, you sort of you don't see it anymore. But as soon as you like put yourself out there, it's amazing how many doors open up for you. And I can't imagine like I want to be on a world stage representing a country I love. I mean, what more do you want? Because you, I mean, you're a mother of two. Uh, you've got businesses. So what made you take that leap of faith and enter Mr. South Africa? I think I, I just felt like I needed to wake up, you know, wake that part of myself up. You know, growing up, I always knew that there was something special I could do. I had a voice that I could reach others. And I felt like I let that go. So I needed something to just push me and get me going again. Speaking of that pushing and get going journey, the Mr. South Africa has really evolved in the last 11 years. It's, it's not just a pageant. It's become a very powerful women empowerment movement. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, and I think what happened, if I really have to think back over the years, is we recognize the incredible growth that we see in women through their journey with Mrs. South Africa and how the women truly use this platform to grow their own brand, to grow their own businesses, to affect change in other people's lives. And it's been incredible to see the ripple effect it's had in that way and how it really is a platform and opportunity to, to affect change and to, to make a difference in other women's lives. Yeah, yeah no, but, uh, sorry, I, I was just thinking now to myself, you speaking from experience. I mean, yeah. you've, you've won the title, you've walked that journey, but you've definitely taken it to another level. For sure. Um, Tenji, I just want to ask you, you know, the Mr. South Africa does quite a few workshops um, as a semi-finalist and as a finalist. What does that all entail? Oh, wow. It's such a wide range. And, you know, that's the lovely thing about it because it's things that you'd also not even think about. So there's a lot in terms of yourself as a brand, presentation skills, because, you know, sometimes you have to get sponsorship, how to present yourself and start seeing yourself as the brand that you actually are. And there's also like social media tips, um, digital. We moved into the digital space and a lot of us actually didn't even know how to use our social media. <laughs> so we had a lot of workshops on that and, you know, beauty tips. It's, it's an all round getting you out there, getting you more confident when you put yourself out there, you know exactly what to do. Yeah, because I, I think many people get it wrong when they, when they think of a workshop. The workshop really does, it's, it plays part of your preparation yes. mm -hmm. in um, the build up to the, to the finale. And afterwards as well, because everything you've taken, you know, you, you use much longer afterwards. Yeah. I think that's why we can call it an empowerment movement, because that's what it does. Mm -hmm. It teaches you or it ignites things in you that you never knew of and, you know. Mm -hmm. so, I like what you said, igniting things in you. I think that's exactly what happens. You know, it's you are entering into this program and then it truly really ignites that, whether it's passion for you or learning new life skills or, you know, I always say that I... Um, have learned more from entering pageants and competing in pageants over the years than I had at university, for instance. Um, you truly just learn a lot about yourself mm -hmm. and, um, you know, people skills, um, life skills, business skills, all those things, interview skills, how to speak publicly, all those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, I fully, I fully agree with you because, yeah. I mean, that's how I started. Yeah, exactly, and that's what <laughs> so, I just wanted to say. It's also things that I've learned from you over the years and you've had, you know, played such a big role in my life. So thank you. No, I love you. Thank you, my jokey. But you, you, know, you know what, uh, just on that note, when you say that it really does... It's like, it's like a university of life, if you know what I'm, what I'm saying. No varsity or any educational um, institution can teach you those skills that you learn mm. through a platform like pageants. Right. Um, but I also want to say that it's never too late. Mm. You know, a lot of people think that they reach a certain age. Oh, I've missed my deadline. Or mm. I've got now kids. So I think it's really wonderful that one could then still have an avenue to be able to celebrate your life at that mm. point and, you know, fulfill your dreams. Mm, so. Absolutely. And I think that was something that was quite, um, that stood out for me when I entered Mrs. South Africa and when I realized that there is a platform out there such as Mrs. South Africa for married women. Because, you know, growing up, you know, you have dreams and ambitions and there's all, almost this stigma that by the time you get married and have children, you know, you kind of have to let go of those dreams. Which isn't true mm. because, you know, I feel... Being 30, being 40 right now, I am the absolute best version of myself and I have grown into the woman that, that I want to be. And I think, therefore, it's important to also have a platform for women that's, you know, in their 30s, in their 40s, having children, being mums and all of that. So. Right. Thanks, Joe. The 
Tenji, you know, we're building up now to the announcement of the top 25, 25 or 15? 25? 25. 25 finalists for 2021, yes. right? What advice would you actually give to someone that's now in that position as a finalist? Oh my gosh, I'm oh, in the nerves. <laughs> I'm just thinking back to my time. Um, I think, firstly, like just hold on to why you came in in the first place. Because mm. I think a lot of ladies, it, it gets busy and the tension gets high and you forget what, you know, where you came. Mm. And that's what's going to keep you going. So f- remember why you're here. Remember what your purpose is in there. And also hold on to everything that you've learned along the way. I think a lot of the ladies sort of think um, not making it through is the end of it. But I've met ma- ladies who were, didn't make it to top 50 last year and they're doing so well. You're never the same afterwards. Mm. So mm. just hold on to everything you've had and grow from there it's not the end and then everybody who makes it through just keep on you know take it to the next level take it to the next level you know on that on that note i also feel that if it's not your year now yeah mm. into next year mm. yeah whatever you've learned from this year is the foundation for you to to better yourself to to get to a point where you are then ready yes so i always say you know preparation mm. is is key because It's not about one shot and then you've just got it. I mean, we've got a former Miss South Africa that entered pageants three, four, five times the mm. same one before that they right. actually got to reaching the level of a national mm. um, title. Absolutely. So I always say that, you know, if you really want it, mm. then, you, then you, you'll see it as a proper learning curve. Learn and enter again. Mm. Enter again. I mean, the one Miss USA that um, she was a military. Yes. Yes. Seven times yes. before exactly. she won Miss USA. That's I mean, that right. is... Determination. Yeah. Even Zazi, I think mm, she entered Miss mm. SA twice. I met her at Miss Mamelodi, yes. When she yeah. was Miss Mamelodi Sundowns <laughs> finalist, and then she moved on to Miss SA twice. You're right. Mm. And then I mean, look what happened. But I think it really, what people forget is that it really sets the foundation mm. to get you to the level where you, when you do get it, mm. you're mm-hmm. ready for it. Because, you know, that, at that point, your character might not be able to keep you there. You mm. know what I'm saying? So never take things personally. It's, mm. uh, and like you said now, know why you're here. Mm. Yes, we want the crown, but it's more than just the crown. Absolutely. You know, it's and I, I think the ladies do. I've seen over the years, they make beautiful connections and friendships. Mm. They do last, mm. you know. Mm. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's my, what I would also mm. just, you know, just add to Exactly. Don't give up, you know. Mm. And talking about those connections and friendships, even mm. last week I was being interviewed by two ladies who were the previous year before me, where they're in the top 25, and they have a show together. So they met because of the Mrs. Right. SA journey and they were propelled forward mm. and had their own you know, show. Mm. So I keep emphasizing you're never the same. Just grab everything you've learned and move forward. Mm. Mm. I think what I love about it as well um, is that it does push you out of your comfort zone. Mm. So it is going to take you to places that mm. you've never been exposed mm. to. But you know what? That's part of learning. It's mm. part of growing is that it's not comfortable always. Yeah. Exactly. But once you just take the leap of faith, yeah. you'll be surprised what it actually can do for you, for your life as a whole. Absolutely. You know? um, Joni, it's a director of, a, of an international modeling agency. It's Mrs. South Africa. Um, I'm not going to now reveal all the businesses, but what are your future plans? Wayne, I think specifically for Mrs. South Africa, you know, we've had a difficult year um, with COVID and lockdown regulations, obviously being in the event industry. We also sadly recently went through some controversial issues in the media. So, you know, when you're in a crisis like that, I think you truly learn a lot. And that's the beauty of, of a crisis. And I think that I have learned so much this past year. Um, it's really shaped me as a person. It's shaped, um, you know, the company, um, the, the broader sisterhood as well. And I feel that moving forward, you know, we are given an opportunity to truly um, just do better in all aspects. And that's a beautiful thing. I think when approached constructively, you can truly do better and learn from it. And um, the one thing that I'm excited about is to restructure Mrs. South Africa as a company. Um, So I am talking to a a few uh, close associates that will possibly be coming part of the company as shareholders. And uh, we also are establishing a board of directors. Um, an independent board of directors that will take on an advisory role because I just realized that I've been reminded that this brand is bigger than one person and therefore it's important to to bring in 
you know, more people and establish um, a an official board of directors, which I'm very excited about. No, awesome, yes. man. No, we look forward to seeing who's going <laughs> to be on that board and who the new key uh, players are going to be. No, but that's all about growing and about, um, that's when you know your brand has got to a point that you need to Absolutely. Uh, yes, expand. So, mm, yeah. make me very proud. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, I get super so excited. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's the beauty of everything. You know, you just take it to the next level, next level, next level. Absolutely. And I mean, you guys as a brand have done phenomenal. I mean, we if we look back at 2016, mm. we've got a Mrs. World. You mm. know what I mean? We've Absolutely. Had, the girls have really excelled. Uh, internationally as well, you know. I agree. And uh, you know what? I also recently thought back over the past 10 years. And as you say, we've achieved so many mm. things and we shouldn't take away from that. You know, internationally, how we've uh, repositioned the brand, how we've grown it, etc., etc. And it's been a wonderful journey. And I think at one point when I was driving, I actually thought of this. And I thought that, you know, it, it, it became a well-oiled wheel. But then... Though that wild world wheel needed to be reinvented. And I think that's where we are now. Yes, it became a wild world wheel, but now we at also at a process where we, we need to reinvent because of how the world has changed and how everything has changed around us. So I'm excited for, for a new era mm. and just taking it forward. Yeah, because no, you guys have kept moving with the times. I mean, you've, you've got your, your queen in 2020 <laughs> that you did about a hybrid. <laughs> And that's what it's about. I mean, you've got to think out the box, mm. you know, in any business. Mm. So that's no, exciting. I'm excited for you. I'm excited about the brand. And I'm excited to see who is going to be in the top 25 mm -hmm. to possibly walk in your shoes now um, as a successor. <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And, uh, oh, guys, it's a deeper day today that we're shooting. So I'm spending my wonderful one of my 67 minutes with two very successful <laughs> and gorgeous friends and queens. So oh. from me, Wayne Stafford, until next time, you take care.